All right, we got the white pieces. E5 was kind of threatened there. Wow, he is matching me. He's a stonewall enthusiast himself. Okay, whenever someone matches you like this, I think it's really key to, you know, put those stonewall ideas into play. Not knight d2, because... So what? But getting this bishop to h4 ASAP, I really like. I think just rook b1. Don't think we need to stress too much about that. Let's go h3. We might need, you know, rook g1, g4. We need two. Because, yeah, when, when we're just like this, then we have to be a little more mindful. Definitely play a3. Ooh, he's closing things up. Okay, I'm definitely gonna take this. <laughs> Question is, do we wanna take this? I think the answer is no. We'll definitely take this. That's a free pawn. Rook there seems a little bit strange. Now it's time for this knight to appear. <laughs> I wasn't going to take the rook, of course. I was going to take the knight and then the rook. But, well, I mean, that's just a 2,000 blunder in every single piece. C4 is an awful move. It continues to be an awful move. And it continues to be people's favorite move. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why not the knight earlier? When you're playing against a symmetrical stone wall, I'm never in a big rush to, like, play a move like this. Because to me, they could take and then put their knight in and I don't know. These positions can just get very cut and dry, like a little bit boring. A lot of trades. So yes, I want to go here, but usually when I see this, I need a, a break. C4 or G4. And I, I like G4 for the most part because it has an attacking idea. So here I was probably going to go for... Well, I went for this free pawn, but I was probably gonna go rook g1, g4, takes, and if I take, and they take this way, then I love playing knight e5, because then if I get captured and I take back, there's no e pawn, because the e pawn has taken back on f5. So now that pawn's a protected pass pawn. That is much better than right now where it's not. So that's why I like to go for like a plan like g4, and if I take any takes with the g pawn, I can enjoy the open file. If he takes with the e pawn, then it's time for knight e5. All right, a Canadian. We got the white pieces again. Well, this looks like a looks like a d6, bra. Knight coming to d2. I don't know why this knight's on a6. It's not really doing anything over there. Um, that move also doesn't appear to do that much. Queen here, queen here. I think this one so that we can go knight d2 next. The knight t2 has knight c4 as an idea. I'm also just, I want to say a little bit ahead in development. Okay. There's the move. I'll take.
And it, the knights for him have been a little bit strange this game. This knight went to d5, that knight went to a6. Wow, resignation. These 2Ks, they all just like blunder upon and resign. What the heck? <laughs> That's all it takes. I mean, what's going on right now? Just gained like 35 points like it was nothing. Very friendly guys today, all resigning. Everyone seems to be resigning today. Are you guys disrespectful? Night D2. Yeah, that's a good move there. All right, we got to keep the stone wall energy. What is with people playing this move? This move is so bad. Why does everyone like it? <laughs> it's actually awful. They see that it attacks a piece and they get so hot and bothered. Like they're just they're winning the game on the spot or something. And this move is not just in the stone wall, right? This just refers to any time you push that pawn to attack a bishop there, and it's never good. All right, let's control e5 so we can't move there. We should be six, knight d7, and I mean, we should be coasting here. Swing the rook over. This bishop can still go there. Queen there. I think we'll just hit him with a rook b8 move. And of course, g5, g4. But yeah, this move is just particularly wrong. I want to ease off on that for now just because it technically hangs upon. Let's go here, get off the e-file, also play bishop h5. I have to be careful with this move though, because there is a pin, so king h8 might be a very nice next move. All right, I'm not gonna blunder our pawn there. e4 doesn't, like, yeah, just no threats. No threats. I don't see any pin now, so I'm gonna take that opportunity to play bishop h5. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is this move? Well, taking on f3 obviously looks very strong. Um, we have to be careful of that. No doubt. This is definitely the move. I'm gonna figure out what we do after. There is something to be said about this for him, which, you know, if we take a knight here, there might be like knight takes d5. I don't know. I'm really feeling like moving this. <laughs> Just keeping it simple. Bishop takes f3 is like screaming to be played, but. I will bite the bullet and just go here. Hmm. 
Hmm. Can we get that to work? I think it does work. I think it does work. Well, imagine that my opponent had their pawn on c4. Look how much pressure they would have on the d pawn. I, I would have to spend my... Like, the fact that I don't have to worry about my pawns, I can focus all my attention over here. That's not what you want as white. Knight takes, I think, trade, and the knight's trapped on g5. Still quite suspicious. That's friendly. Knight takes in d5 was... It's got to be still better for black, but it was annoying. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah, definitely my opponent missed a, a move that is definitely more resourceful than what they played. Just take back if he takes on c6. Bring this rook somewhere over here. Knight f8. We need to reroute this knight. Put it somewhere. just so important to guard that pawn I think knight f8 next we have a protected pass pawn so we're feeling pretty good G2's hanging, so he may need to trade. Because queen takes G2, like, literally threatens mate. So if he plays, like, rook here, for example. Yeah. Right. 
right? We give some checks. Let's give this check. Take with the queen. Good game. Even though up a piece for most of that game. I still needed some conversion, but it was always winning. Um, yeah, h6 traps the piece, but I think there were better moves. Queen g6, knight f6, rook over. This move, 94. I don't like the look of 94. That... That gave me a bad feeling as soon as I saw it. Ugh. Gross. But the game was very, very, like, good. I mean, it's crazy that people don't understand you're supposed to leave the pawn here. Like, for example, if you play knight c3, bishop, wherever, I don't know, bishop d3, castle, castle. This is exactly what happened in the game, but notice how I can't go play knight e4. This here makes a huge difference. If I play this, I mean... Queen b3, d5 is so loose. And this bishop might be tied here, queen b3. But as soon as you play c5, it's it's nasty. I don't have to worry about this. I just go knight e4 and black's just better. So it's very strange, but I wonder what reading that move stops happening because it's no good. All right, Alex. E5 not quite possible yet. Remember, we don't want to do this. That's no, off limits. Okay. Interesting. G6. So c4 is kind of a threat because it's going to force me to take on f5. Even still, like that position is not, not too bad, but I find that annoying a little bit. g6, g6. Yeah, is g4 too aggro? It is. I'm going to play it, but it, it is too aggressive. <laughs> That's the short answer. Stopping knight e4. I think he should be playing knight e4 and f5, personally. This move has been good for a while. Um, you guys will probably also notice how we haven't really dealt with somebody taking. Everyone seems to play c4. Taking is always like a strong idea. I mean, the bishop wants to take on f4. Opens the c file. It means there's counterplay now. I can't just like attack like mad and know that the queen side is closed.
Okay, that's a bold move. Um, I, I just don't know how the knight's getting out. Maybe it doesn't need to. Normally a knight on c2 should be... Should run out of real estate. He played it pretty confidently. Like, most people can't put their knight on c2 like that. You know, even just the notion looks like it's going to be trapped. Even if you calculate a line and you're like, oh wait, but it's actually okay. You kind of convince yourself out of it, right? Wow. Queen there. I think he's just overestimating things. I don't really know. He's he's put his knight on c2 very confidently. And I don't know, maybe he just hasn't had his knight trapped like that very much before because his he's not sensing any danger. For that night. This move is important to guard e3, which was his main threat there. Yes, I'm giving up this pawn, but we win a piece, so of course it's worth it. Wow, what a strange game. And another resign bra. Very respectful today. That was a bluff. It turns out it was a bluff the whole time. Well, it was a good bluff by him. This was a particularly successful opening for him because he didn't play this first of all we don't want to dabble in that and then g6 is pretty effective because now if i play knight here c4 can be played i have to take e takes and this is what you don't want because now when the knight goes c5 f6 can be played to kick me out he has the e4 square i don't have the e5 square and he still has space that he's going to gain over there so I don't like these kind of positions, which is why I play g4. g4 is not a great move. Um, yeah, and here, cd makes sense. Because if we play pawn takes, we just drop that. You know? So here, I think he just had to play knight back to c6, but knight c2, I... I'm willing to bet you can play it, but you need to immediately start supporting the knight. He just b5, queen c3 was wrong ideas, so. This was uh, probably the first sign of a not great position with the white pieces that we got from someone. So I credit Alex Ammons for that. So we're at 2100 in our Stonewall series. I'm not sure what rating I'm going to, but I always say like, I'm gonna probably go until it stops being educational or informative. And I think it still is. Most of what we've uh, talked about still works even at these levels, so. Let's go, 2100, five minute games. Well, D4, we're gonna go D5. I like to get the bishop developed early. You see how quick people are to bring that knight in as the, as it gets, you know, to higher and higher rated players. People really uh they're fast with uh with that. 
I want to play queen here, but c5 is available. Yeah. Ooh. F4. All right. Remember, if he ever takes, we're taking with the pawn, actually. And I think that's quite, quite annoying. Maybe rook g8. I want to move my queen as well. Get out of this pin. That way we can bring this bishop here. He's copying me. That's how good the opening is. Come on, bruh. We're going to take. We don't love taking. Being with the black pieces, we're just a little bit... A little bit slow to accomplish some plans. Let's go here. I want to move my queen and play 94. That's pretty much it. This move hurts to play, but eh. I didn't really want to take. Go this one. Creekor, thanks so much for the raid. Was Creekor playing in that chess.com event? Thanks a lot, buddy. I yeah, I just played the uh, chess played quick. He was playing. Nice. Noise. That pawn is hanging. If he takes, I think we take that that way, actually. Let's get a shout out. Uh, but Thanks for the raid again. I'm doing a series on the stone wall right now, which is uh, going well. We're at 2100. It's uh, been a long grind up. I think the stone wall is uh, an opening that will work work pretty well it'll serve you well even up to 2100 i started at literally 400 elo so it's been a, a long grind it has if we take here and take and take and go here i just don't think it's enough i don't think it's good enough I think our rook wants to go back. There's no penetrating this, you know, fortress here. He wants to kick me out. That's fine. I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone. This doesn't look like too much of a problem. Let's finally do something with this bishop. Finally, this bishop is doing semblance of something. All right, move this guy.
That's a crafty move. Pal. I'm not seeing the danger. I get this, I get this, I get this, but I'm just not seeing where the pieces end up and why it's a problem. Hey, good eye, chest ninja. That's kind of what I'm looking at, yeah. Still got to watch out for, as I was about to say, rook b2. Let's close off the b file. We can't have him using the b file, that's for sure. White's bishop doesn't exist, basically. And the knight's actually really bad as well. There's no nowhere the knight can move. So my bishops have found, ooh, and we love to see that. We really do. the lounge playlist chess bra lounge baby all right knight here kind of doing a whole lot of nothing Not want to be taking that. Also opens F1 for us to use. Just bother the rook. Maybe get it off the B file. I don't feel like he can take a draw. This helps me or not. I'll pre-move it. It's like oh wow. Even had time for the stutter step at the end. For all the bullet have its fans out there. You just never know if that king might end up there. That would be a stalemate. 
<laughs> but this is all proof that the stone wall. Let's not forget. Let's not forget what's really being talked about here. The stone wall is just that good. I'm not making any moves that you guys couldn't sit at home and make yourselves. All right? It's the point of this series. We're not trying to be unattainable. We're just trying to make a move that the average player could find. You guys can all do this with the opening, the stone wall. Oh, we did get a move. I usually play E6. Very hard, as you can imagine, to play this setup as black. So I go D5. Um, if they take it, we still have a, you know, a hope to play the move F5 and whatnot. Bishop here should be playable just due to the fact we have 94. I know it looks weird, but he's not going to get F3 right away. He's going to have to move the knight. That's not to say my position is good, but got the stone wall. It's happening. Bishop g5 makes a lot of sense. This is pretty much a pre-move. Like, you know, I suppose I should anticipate my opponent's strong bishop g5 move, but castling is pretty much a pre-move here. Okay, knight g5. Less scary. Much less scary. F takes e4. This is the stonewall dream. This is, you know, this is what we're working towards here. Maybe queen here, bishop g4. This is what we want. I'm very happy now. start with this actually I'm, I'm not sure if he's gonna play here so for the moment okay that's what i like to see that's the move i like to see we need to queen b3 just eh, a little bothersome f4 we almost always take but here here i don't think i will um i almost always take when there's an e pawn that's a better way to put it like if white had a pawn on e3 i'd be capturing but right now i don't think that's necessary H3, G4 might happen, so I'm going to play H5. Mm. Positions like this uh, are definitely a little funny looking. takes there is some some kind of a checkmate idea there she has to be careful of wasn't it a free knight on g5 john omaton one i do not believe so I think my knight was pinned. And even if it wasn't, knight takes, there was queen h5 check. So, not by my calculation. h4, g4, takes, king there, h3. And then if takes, we have 93. We have to seize our moment here. And we have to seize our moment. If we don't play H4 now, there may never be a chance. Why would the pawn on E3 be relevant to taking the pawn on pass on F4? Well, if there's a pawn here, then when I take, it's going to be a weakness. If there's no pawn here, then it means I have a pawn on e4, and it's probably a protected pass pawn. Which is a big advantage, and I wouldn't want to give it up. 
H4 was too powerful. I mean, if he goes here. I was going to go H3. Um, Knight E3 is probably a decent move, but H3 first is much better. Eventually, that bishop's going to have to leave, which is going to open up the queen, and that's game over. All right. John Vaughn, 640. I'm going to start with D4. Usually, when C5 happens, I throw in uh, C3, but my plan is not really to take this way. It's always to take that way. C4. People are addicted. They really are. Here. Yeah, remember, we don't really want to take that. It's kind of uh, important. Get in here. Yeah, the way I'm doing the uh, Stonewall Gory is pretty much never allowing a pawn to get to F5. I don't like doubled F pawns because one of them controls E4 and one of them plays F6. And then I never get to use E5. So I've mostly been trying to avoid, avoid that, yeah. It's not that it's always a bad move, but I'm pretty much always avoiding it. And the only time that I, I think I have played this in maybe one game, uh, the idea was to immediately take the knight after, so. G4 is definitely not far off. So there are pawns loose here, but opening up the queen side is not really how we want to play. A3 is a little bit too destructive to my position. Because there are things like takes, no takes, E5. I'm trying to win this pawn, but I don't really like them. I don't really like them. If he takes on a3, I think it's probably a mistake. Rook takes. So now at least we get some... Um, 
we get some counterplay. Wow, that's a professional move, Rook B3. Very professional. Let's bring our bishop around. Rook B3 is one of those moves I'm not super keen on taking, <laughs> at least not yet. But I will, I'll consider taking it soon. Can't leave it there forever. So this rook is, I don't know how to evaluate the position because the rook, you can never play a3. This knight can't really do much there. Interesting. It's time to move ours as well. You're getting out of the way, I'm getting out of the way. All right, let's close it. Don't want his queen swinging over after taking. We can go here, if rook g6 we have H5. Yeah, he is getting his queen out. Queen is trapped now, though. Maybe time to take this at long last. Queen d8, I'll go here. Good game, John Vaughn. So like, Black's position is starting to get really bad because I actually should have played rook g7 here. Uh, I was only thinking about rook g5 and how 
he would never have any threats here. So I actually converted it in a pretty nice way, but uh, missed initially rook g7. Yeah, now, now there's not much. He had to play this, which I was expecting. Um, but yeah, no, he played a played a good opening. Bishop f5. I think for him, uh, where did it go wrong? I don't know. Like, this was all good. I think he just played it pretty well. Here, I I am always a little bit partial to moves like this. Um, takes and knight here. So at the moment, maybe this is playable, but I think black's better here, even though I want a pawn. Uh, but basically black wants to get in with the knight there. You know, knight d2 can happen. Maybe knight d6. Here it's particularly not good because of that, but even something like this and playing f5 or f6. I'm just not really sure that uh, I should be getting control of these light squares and playing e4 like I did in the game. That was a good struggle, though. I think he could have played knight e4. It ruins his pawns, but it gives him b3. I think that was an opportunity for him. Yeah, rook g7 I should have played, but at least what I was planning instead and was always on my mind was still completely winning. So we missed a good move, but we still played a great one. Those are the kind of blunders you want to have, rather than missing a good move and making a bad one. Wow, look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another Stonewall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also, click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.